welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show is coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Wow. Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to the show. It's great to have all of you tune us in and turn us on. Why? Uh, Guess who's in the house? Uh, Dream Diva. In the house. Kelly Kelly Keel, in the house, look it. This is for me, having a conversation with somebody that has so far extended the idea of what this means to become the dream diva. But even beyond that, listen to what today's episode's about. Are you ready for it? Dying to dream. Dream medium. Yeah, Kelly. Kelly Keel is joining me here today. Write this number down. Also, Facebook, Transformation Talk Radio, 1-800-930-2819. Now, for those of you that already know who Kelly is, I'm going to be redundant. But for those of you that don't, when you take a look at somebody's journey and you see what they say yes to, and you see what taps them on the shoulder or two by four, what you find is you find a profile of who they are and what they've said yes to. Certified dream instructor, yes, right? But more than that, this is somebody that understands the power of having a passion and a purpose and being immersing it in media. Whether it's media, radio, television, it doesn't matter. Whether you're understanding that your life is so much more than that and it's about helping people, it is that too. As a media marketer entrepreneur, she has collaborated with some of the most incredible top brands in the country to take a message out there that we can be all we can be. Now, what happens when you then become the dream diva? When you are now the provider to countless people of soul messaging, of what does it mean to be in, be out, and be of something that you may or may not be able to put your fingers and hands on. I love this. I love this because if you are not tapped in to the highest order vision, the spiritual complexity of the paradox of nature, if you're not tapped into your wants and desires, if you are not tapped into the belief that you can accomplish it today, 1-800-930-2819, you're going to call us. We're going to help you. And if you can't get into the show or can't reach the show, you're going to get a hold of the dreamdiva.com. Kelly, it's great to have you. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for that amazing intro. And I couldn't say it any better. That was so beautiful. And I can't wait to talk with people and put them into their, you know, Mm -hmm. dream higher self zone and tap Mm -hmm. into that amazing energy that we have experienced right here at our fingertips and are living examples of and can give our stories about. So yes, let's go. Look at, let's start with a conversation. I want to get right into this about, you know, this idea of dying to dream um, that has multiple meanings. And I want to talk about it. That's our episode today. It's what we're going to really, it's what we're going to really introduce to people because it's something that you discovered about that next level for you in a way that only you can discover it and then deliver it. And I just want to take this time right now to let people know what this now is, because it's another, it's another dimension of your work, isn't it? It absolutely is. I started off as a self-help expert dying to heal myself and literally dying and my hair was falling out. So take this back to 2005 after a 40 year sugar addiction and compulsive overeating pattern since I was a baby, I was dying to heal. And that desperation and that desire to maintain my health and my beauty and my life opened me up to pull in the answers from, you know, higher consciousness 
to then pioneer sugar-free, gluten-free, vegan, healthy lifestyle to heal my body and to, you know, create a whole new career and, you know, write the cookbooks and to sell the TV show. And I have walked that path ever since. But what did I, what I didn't know was that, wow, that, that kind of eating helped my crystal clarity and consciousness develop to a higher level. Yeah. That's what you'll find with a lot of people who do expand their higher sensory perception, talking to, you know, other dimensions or reaching other dimensions or having out of body experiences. It really is about, you know, you are what you eat kind of thing. And it's not for everybody, but it definitely was mm -hmm. for me because yeah. of the gut brain connection. So that I had no idea was going to launch me into more um, expansive ability to dream, to use my imagination, to access my consciousness, to pull it in and be able to act yeah. on it because I had such clarity and I was free of addiction, which is, was the key. Yeah. Look, I love this conversation about this for several reasons. Uh, one of the things that you and I have in common is, you know, having, at least for me in my life, a lot of things I have looked at my life and said, oh my gosh, did that really happen? Never did I have issues with my body, the strength of my body and wellness until 2004. And do you know why I love talking with you about this? Because somehow, whatever you believe in, God, universe, goddess, pick, it doesn't matter is so much smarter than I am and I was that it knew at the very time I was going to need to face that, that it was for a higher purpose. Did you feel like that? At the time, all I knew is that I was so desperate to stop my hair from falling out because I really thought that this was the only good asset that I had on my body. Obviously, my self-esteem was so low about everything else. And I think that other women, you can relate to that body yeah. image, especially being in Hollywood, that um, and the pressure to look good. I was aware of my psychic abilities and my ability to dream and be creative because how else would I have gotten into film school, you know, and, and gotten out there, right? So I did, but I didn't know that it was going to, the eating was going to change my capacity to be intuitive and creative and have a more powerful uh, connection to God. But I did know that my, it was my connection to God and to my higher self and to my spirit guides was how I was pulling in the information. I felt guided. I felt purposeful. Nobody believed in me. My TV team um, ridiculed me, my food team, um, you know, probably spit out my food. I mean, they were telling me that I would go nowhere. And yet I knew when I was teaching, you know, recording the show that this was going to be something now look at 20 years later or 15 years later, look at the industry. Now, when it comes to health yeah. food, um, it exploded so let's just say the visionary, when you know, and when you have that gnosis, how did I have that gnosis? Because I, it came <laughs> to me that it came to me that this, this can happen. This can be real. And then you, when you start healing yourself, you want to share the information. I think that's what it came down to. I had the desire to share the information so that other people could benefit. Yeah. Like, like I did. I don't know yeah. if I answered your question. You did. You did. But I'm going to, I like, I got to keep going because I got to piggyback off this. Yeah. Um, look, I love doing this. I, I don't know about you. Never thought in a million years when I was growing up in my corporate job, my corporate career. So all y'all out there that are just hearing this bizarre, con okay, you can email me and I'll explain. I'm actually going to write an article. But all y'all out there that are hearing this bizarre conversation and articles about quiet quitting, they are ridiculous. Here's why they're ridiculous. Those of you all that think you're a quiet quitter, you know what you're doing? You're simply leveling the playing field because it's taken you close to three decades to realize that the exchange between you and your organization has been out of balance for a really freaking long time. So let's just be clear about that. But what has that done? It's done what Kelly's just talking about. See, you may be quietly quitting in the eyes of some corporate person or somebody that came up with that phrase that honestly, I don't even understand it. You know what you've done? This is not the age of resignation. It's the age of res resurrection. That's what Kelly's talking about. So here's the question, right? 
You may think you're the most ridiculous person on the planet that should be doing what the most ridiculous thing is, but I'm telling you, that is not what she does. Listen, Kelly, here's the thing. We got to have a message today for people. And the message is, one, don't be put into a quiet quitting label or a resignation label or a whatever label, because you were told the same thing I was. I mean, I was told by the head of a major media company in 2004 that I'd be lucky if I stayed on air for 15 minutes. And yet Edelman at the time said this. I have a quote from Edelman that said, I don't know what you're doing with this crust busting thing, because that was my brand and my show. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing with this, uh, Dr. Pat, but keep doing it. So how do we cut the wheat? the chaff, the wheat, the chaff, the corn, the cob, I don't care what you call it. How do we cut that nonsense out and get to what's in our heart? So when you have a dream, maybe it's a dream because maybe um, that's the way you um, are giving messages or maybe you don't even feel like you're psychic or intuitive or you, you don't know, but you want to be told what to do. And of course, everybody wants that guidance from something that feels so credible. So having gnosis, that physical experience of knowing can come through a dream from your soul telling you that's smarter, bigger, better, faster, stronger than we could ever be. The part of ourselves comes in and gives us a dream where you just know because of the energy, because of the color of it, because of the feelings in it, because of it was what you were thinking about. And then you're giving this dream that you can do what you really want to do. That's what has carried me through and not listen to other people. Now, I know I have so many friends that listen to other people and they have to get advice from everyone. And because I was unique or different or always living on the verge or the, the edge or the fringe of any kind of friend group, I don't know, because I was different. I, I yeah. thought everybody thought like me, obviously not, <laughs> that I learned to turn that into a strength and follow my own instincts. And, and that gnosis came from dreams. And then when I man when you took take action on the dream and you see it come and you see synchronicity and the universe supporting you and things lining up, you're like, okay, then I can believe, then you build momentum in the gnosis and the physical experience and you take it in and you learn to take the next step. And it's a creative process between you and your soul and your spirit and your dream imagination and your, your child within. And it has to be an innocence at first. And then you, of course, it's a process of stepping into the parenting of yourself and then back to the child and back to the, but it's about taking that, those steps of asking, um, what do I believe in? What do I want to do? What's right for me? But you're talking about, you know, work and, and having that corporate, you know, atmosphere beat you down and people are saying, and, and, and I was, and I just experienced that in a new job um, which I know I'm meant to be there. And yet yeah. all odds were against me. And guess what came in to save me? Swoop in psychic dream after psychic dream after psychic dream to, to get me through, I'm talking minefields yeah. day after day. And it all hope was lost. And I went to myself and I knew what was true. And I stood up for myself and I, saw everything finally change. So it took eight weeks to change it around. And um, I was I was given the dreams that you are you are you're going to teach people creativity and it's going to grow. And these this is what people want about you from you. And it's going to start with seven people. And then it's gonna grow. <laughs> you have to trust that. How can you not? Because love and joy was in the dream. That was the vibration. How can mm -hmm. you not trust love and joy? So you have to know, you have to know the vibration that you want and you have to. So here, here it comes. I feel like quitting you, it, perseverance pays not quitting. Yeah. So, no kidding. Right. Look, not only does it pay, but this is the body of work that you and I are talking about where we help people, you help people get past that. Let's just call it that, that, that point, mm -hmm. that point where you're ready to throw in the towel, but not really, you're ready to think, should I be really doing this? But not really. And how do you get into your heart? We're going to take a short break before we do. Let's make sure everybody knows how to get a hold of you. Tell them what you're up to. And when we come back, what is, 
dying to dream really mean? How do we get a hold of you? Info at thedreamdiva.com. Please email me, ask me your questions, send me your dreams to interpret on air. I would love to hear yeah. from you and work with you in your dreams. Yeah, I want to tell you this. Underneath what she just said, underneath that, there is an enormous vision waiting to be activated. See, that's what we're talking about. Can we get to it ourselves? Mm, me, not so much. But can you get to it if somebody helps and guides you through it? Yes. And when you go through it, what does ha what happens to your world? We're going to take a look at that when we come back to Kelly Keogh here joining me on the show today. The show, Die in a Dream. Want some help? 1-800-930-2819. We're going to be right back, Jacob. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Kelly is in the house. I just want to tell everybody, thedreamdiva.com. Thank you for letting me know to say it slower, thedreamdiva.com. Also, please go ahead and follow Kelly over on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at The Dream Diva. It's really simple, D-I-V-A, yes. Uh, if you want to get a hold of Kelly, info, very simple, at thedreamdiva.com. I want to talk about sort of the evolution and sort of when you have one sort of ethereal aspect of your life happen and then you have more and we keep building and we keep getting ideas because that's what happens when you activate a dream it doesn't mean that you're going to get stuck to that dream forever like i had a dream to get a doctorate at an age where i barely graduated high school you see crazy right mm -hmm. um and not for the reasons people think for for reasons I delivered mail in the phone company to these people and they had the PhD at the end of the name, like the guy that discovered the big bang thing, Arno. I used to call him Arno, bagels with Arno. So my brain said, oh my God, that thing means they have fun. They juggle. They take me to sound rooms. See, that's what my brain did. That's what got me to be here today, that thought. So I want to talk to you about this because dying to dream is, is I call it an activation. I want you to describe the double meaning of that and how the activation of what you're about to say can happen to people. What do you think? So I think that you, you may have heard this in other um, new age and self-help types of frameworks or modalities, but the dying. So let's talk about the positive aspect of that. It's the desire. So again, the, the, the energy of the emotion pulls to you that which you think about, right? And you've heard about that, but if it's in alignment with your, let's say you are a spiritual person and you you follow your dreams or you write them down and you try to interpret them, they're gonna have a very close meaning to you because you're going to have desired it and it's going to be an answer. Ask and you will receive. So the dying to dream, but also it goes, it expands to your vision of your life. What do you want to do? Do you want to be, famous? Do you want to be an actor? Do you want to be a novelist? Do you want to write that TV spec script? Do you want to start a business making cakes? What do you want to do? What is your dream? And that dying to dream is mostly pushed down. It's pushed down in so many people more so than not. So I have to say, if you want to activate it, like you graciously said, you must die to, you have to take in that, oh, I'm dying to get this, but you have to embrace it and feel it and live it and put it out there. But on the other hand, on the other wave of the spectrum, the spectrum wave, I, when you are going through a spiritual initiation, so it's one thing to be creative and let your dreams manifest, which is amazing because that's how spirit get persuades you to get more of spirit. It's very persuasive. Dreams are highly persuasive. There's much, there's a lot of movement. They're like movies in your mind um, and you feel them and you experience them. But on the other end of the spectrum of spiritual initiation for people who are working on themselves throughout the decades spiritually, you will go through an ego death or you will go through a physical near death yeah. and you will be initiated and activated into another level of higher consciousness, which could not have lived in that, in that other place that you were. 
And you really, literally, in order to be activated into that, which is through the mind, it's very Jungian, if you will, then there is an actual death of something, whether it's on the physical, emotional, mental, or spiritual level, or or all of the above, yeah, which yeah. is a whole other conversation about, and how do dreams fit into that? Well, the conscious mind is always there and it's taking you through helping you to survive and 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 understand and integrate what it is that's coming because ultimately sometimes you think well I activated that I asked for it and sometimes people just get hit with a lightning strike moment and and they said I never asked for this but they have to deal with it and they have to go there and figure it out so dying to dream is a double entendre because at the at the either if you're dying to manifest or trying to stay alive the dream is in the middle. The dream is the center. The dream is the heart. The dream is the way through to spirit, which is the bridge, which is the child, which is the love, which is the creativity, which is the bridge, the emotion to connect with your spiritual self. And I love this. You know why? Here's the thing. People are rewriting the whole um NDE, NDE, near death experience. I love this. They're rewriting it. One individual in particular wrote a fabulous book. And what they're rewriting about, and let's talk about this, is that there are activations that happen that don't necessarily have to have you flatline. There are things that happen where you are taken out of feet on the ground, right? Boots in the trench for a period of time. When that, and, and by the way, Okay, let's talk about how it happens if it's not like I'm um, flatlining, because that's what NDEs have been known for that. But now the science says no. Now they're like, wait a minute. We can only count those people on one, okay, more than one hand, but you get my point. Now, there's this whole other world of people like you and me, where we have disappeared for a period of time. In my case, I'm like... I don't remember in dialing the emergency and now I'm in an ambulance, right? There are those things, but here's the thing we're going to talk about. Whatever the label is, whatever you want to call it, you all know what I'm talking about. People have done ayahuasca ceremonies and they have been taken to other places. Here's the question. Once you go through this, right, Kelly, you're different. I'm not saying how different you are. I'm just saying something just ain't the same. This here's what I think happens in a definition: the lightning strike moment, which is could be an event happening which causes an emotional break, or which causes more light to come in, and then you know it is it could be a blackout for whatever reason. It there, it could be a, a loss of consciousness, or it could be that you're sick for a year. I mean, it could be either one of those extremes. And everything in between, as many as there are people, there could be a different kind of flatlining kind of experience. And then, but what happens is, is the light, the consciousness, the rewiring of the brain, the ability to see beyond what you didn't see before. And then you know, the gnosis, you can take the action to manifest because you were given the feeling, the dream, the image, whether mm -hmm. it was subconscious or conscious, something is pushing you towards a better life. Something is pushing you towards a higher realization of your heroic probability. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes you're so you're told this is you. And you're like, no, I could never do that. That can never be me. I can't be the Renaissance woman. I can't be the PhD. I can't be that. Are you kidding me? I can't be I, the corporate person. You could you can't be the court, you can't be the president. You can't, you can't be the the novelist, the 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 poet, the the musician, the singer. You can't, you can't be the priest. You can't be the, the, um, who uh, yeah. the, the, the college student. So I feel that, that ship has sailed. <laughs> what? What? That, that college student ship has sailed. Now, look, here's what I love what you're saying. This is really, this is really for me, why it's so exciting to talk to you. I want everybody to, to really wrap your minds around this. There is a point you get where the word can't says to, I won't. I desire not to take that corporate job. See, that is the empowerment part of this. And what Kelly, you're talking about, what we're going to talk about when we come back, is there is a part of us that needs to, for lack of a better term, die. You know, what is that part? Oh, it's the part that says, if I don't get the corporate job, I'm never going to have financial security. I'm never going to fill in the blank yourself. But that's really what we're talking about. 
NDEs, OBEs, ET contact, whatever this is, here's the one thing I know and we're going to talk about. Whatever it is, I, I wish I could say to you, and I think I have said this a couple of years ago, that dreaming was enough. Having this activated was enough. There is a purpose behind this new level of awareness knowledge you have. And it's called action. Would you agree, Kelly? I agree. And I'd like to say yes. And having, well, I adopt a grit and growth mindset, Carol Dweck's mindset. Yeah. Because I can't tell you how many times I've been turned down by Hollywood and the <laughs> staring humiliation through my central nervous system. Nobody would, and who, nobody cares if you pack up your bags and leave. You have to have that dying to dream feeling maybe that is a new mindset dying to dream that should be a new mindset that you're willing to let anything that is holding you back so here it is it's it's about it's the disney dream you yeah. know dare to dream and yet even though how many people you know can say this or that about disney but it's the child belief in the mm -hmm. self and how do you get to how do you bridge from here to there well there is some death that needs to happen um meaning gladly let go of the, the the parts of yourself that don't believe but mm -hmm. it's all about the it's all about the belief and the willingness to re yeah. to re to keep dreaming and keep asking your dreams i can't tell you my dreams are i can't believe they're not sick of me <laughs> yet because i've asked them so many times and i command them and i demand yes them. I talk to them and i say you give me that dream tonight because i need to know and yes. they do and it comes in and I, and you can, you command it like a horse, like your dog. That's how I command my dreams because I know I'm in the right and alignment with God. And, and it comes in and thank you. Thank you. Dreams. Thank you, God. And every day I, yeah. I say, thank you. I, I'm so grateful. And I, I have a relationship and sometimes that's all I have is me and my dream. You know what? We're going to take a short break. Cause I, I, we got to continue with this. Here's what I love about this. This is where I think everybody listening here needs to hear this again. There is an exchange. There is a give and take of the energetic life force we're talking about. When it shows up, it will be activated when? Oh, maybe when you're having a dialogue with it. Maybe when you get to the point where you actually believe you deserve to have it and you ask show me how. Maybe that's all it takes because you have got to, I got to tell you this, I'm going to leave you with this. I had a, I had three days of calls with a really, really popular top of the food chain coach. And I got to see their vision. And here's what I know about visions and dreams. Faith without works is dead. And what that means is you can dream, but boy, you better kick a whole lot of octopi tentacles in place to get you from that place to the command. So this is what Kelly, yeah, this is the dream diva command session when we come back, because if there's nothing you get from this show today, mm -hmm. this, when we come back, this is going to be your command center. This is dream diva command center. When we come back. Are you holding on to something you haven't asked? I know I am. I don't know who Kelly is. But how do you think? Just a thought. Never understood it. How do you think Charlize Theron felt when they were going to do a, a new Mad Max? And she was told she's not getting that role because they couldn't age her backwards. Charlie Stern people who broke through Mad Max mania in a way that no other female, not even Tina Turner, hello, could do it. How did she feel? Did she crumble? Did she fall? Or did she ask then did she hit the next button and say, holy crap, now I'm going to be something with Dr. Strange in this multiverse universe. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back.
welcome. Look at uh, two things you should know. Uh, Dream Giver podcast. Let, come on, let's give people information here because we're just oh. going to be able to warm up in this show and then right. they have to continue. Uh, so they're going to be able to listen to Dream Giver podcast every Wednesday, right? Yep, uh, Wednesday, um, three noon Eastern. Pacific, 3 Eastern. I do have episodes on where you w- listen to your podcast. So there are some back shows, but I'm going to be launching with your network um, on November 2nd. And I'm so excited to be taking live calls and doing dream interpretations on the show live. I love it. I mean, one of the things that we're talking about now, and we're also, you know, this show in particular is really to introduce you to an extended body of work that uh, Kelly has really tapped into. And that tapping into is what we're going to talk about today, because I wasn't kidding. When I talked about Charlize or you pick anybody you want, you know, Charlize, you can pick her. You can pick Rooney Mara. You can pick anybody you know. Uh, my friend Olivia Newton-John. You could pick anybody you know. And you could see because they are in the public eye. And you could see what they bump up against. But what else do you see in them? What do you see? Now, why am I bringing them up? Because they are no different than you or I in our ability to move beyond anything that holds us back. Right or no? They had a dream. And they said, I'm going to manifest it. That's what they said. I mean, Charlize wanted to be a star, a Hollywood star. She wanted to win an Oscar. She did it. Doesn't mean she doesn't have other mountains to climb. Jamie Lee Curtis, I was on set um, with, um, you know, uh, Freaky Friday. She (laughs) commanded that set. She is a diva. And what do I mean by that? In spiritual control with their self and and for the good of all, and yet doing what they love, which was performing, giving joy to the to the globe with their great movies and their women. And that's what I love about it. But you know, we women in Hollywood have to work 10 times harder. Yeah. 10 times harder and be 10 times more um, in control of commanding their creativity. Yeah. Right. So it has to take a strong belief and it, there was no other way for me to do it, but a spiritual way, because it can't be into intellectually hammered into existence. No, it has to, it has to have faith. Like you said, it has to have trust. It has to have surrender. It has to have all the qualities of, um, you know, the balance of the male, female energies, which again, come into your dreams and show you which dr- energies are out of balance or need to be in balance to manifest, you know, into the 3D reality. Yeah, I love it. Einstein was brilliant. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what he meant, but I'm I'm trying to talk to him to ask him. But yeah. when he came out with the statement, and I'm going to paraphrase, it's not the exact quote. It's, you know, when he said, look, you cannot solve the problem at the level it was created. You know, there are a lot of people that wanted to think about that as math theory. That is not what he was saying. Because, oh, ask the question, do you think maybe he had some spiritual insight? We all know Carl Jung, 30 years after his most prominent work, revealed that he felt like he couldn't talk about spirituality enough. But see, this is what we're talking about. You know, call it what you want. You know, it takes many forms, but it is a higher sensory perception. It is something that allows you to tap in. So I want to ask you about two parts of it. What have you learned in helping people first to acknowledge that, and then second, to believe in it, because they're two different energies, right? Mm -hmm. I could acknowledge it, but if I wake up every day and say, oh, that Kelly, wow, that dream diva, she just gave me, she said, but but you know what? I don't think it's really going to work, right? You hear me? Yeah, yeah. So what I see in my students is that I have to constantly remind them, you are good, you are creative, look at this script, now let's shoot, shoot it and keep shooting it. And here's the point, they have to be constantly reminded So what do I do? I learned to be my own coach. I had to remind myself through my dream journal. I have so many journals. I could fill a room. I coach myself. I ask my dreams to coach me. I call in my spirit guides. Doesn't mean that I don't fall on the floor and cry, you know, at times, but I pick myself up and I go back to um, the truth. And I seek it and I ask for it and I demand it because I know I deserve it. And I, I think that's from being a spiritual leader to, I learned to lead myself. So here's, 
So one thing is, is to work with someone who can help constantly remind you until you can learn how to remind yourself, but then you turn around and give it to others so that you can constantly remind yourself through teaching others. Yeah. And, oh. and then you give it away and then it comes back full fold because you see it happening to them. That is, you know, the, the vocation of teaching and the, the gift of service, service to the, to students is the great benefit of receiving back, you know, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the affirmation that what, what I teach is effective yeah. for transformation, for growth, for learning outcomes, for reaching the goal, creating the project, mm -hmm. manifesting the dream, Yeah, which is why I love teaching television and radio because it's the dream of life that we yeah. create with our art. I love this. Look at, I, this, you nailed it. Um, and as a matter of fact, I was explaining to Jessica and Linda, the approach I'm taking with our new producers. And one of the things it comes from what you just said, and here, here's my interpretation of it. I have learned more from teaching than what I've been taught. Now, what does that mean? Does that even make sense? Well, it does. Because there's something about teaching that activates a whole different sense of who you are, isn't it? It's not just about the textbook or what you can memorize. It's how you are showing up, right? Mm -hmm. To assist somebody else on their journey. That has a bigger energy than any GRE, SAT, any exam, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that it is interesting to understand that great spiritual leaders were teachers. And that is how they led. And when it comes down to it, you, you know, we, we must be lifelong learners and be willing to say, okay, not yet. So I'm going to keep going and I'm going to look at this as a challenge and work with, you know, a community of people or leaders or listening to podcasts mm -hmm. and putting the work in because it's so easy to let it slide, but it is a muscle. Self-confidence for me must be a muscle that I exercise every day. Self-belief in my dream is an exercise that I do every day. Yeah. You know why? It's one of the most powerful tools we are, and it's one of the most susceptible that we have to outside influences called doubt, mm -hmm. right? I mean, when you take a look at it on sort of a, um, a um, if you look at it sort of on a, on a scale of things, right, it's very difficult to find people that are not literally core-based in the confidence of who they are. Sarah Main calls it conscious confidence in the work she does, because from her platform, that is conscious confidence includes spirituality. But it's hard to find people, right, that you can point to and you say, wow, you are a fantastic landscaper. And then say, oh, but you don't have any confidence in yourself. I mean, it's almost like strange when I just said that, right? Well, and it brings up the idea that Here's a re some research that pointed to, um, you know, there, you know, the United States is very low when it comes to on the level of academic standards. And there are other countries that are way above us, that, like Japan, who knows. But when it comes to confidence, American boys rank number one. What it, it, whatever, even if it's a false confidence. Now, what does that say about the United States and us, our young culture, cultural history, but that the the male aspect, the young male aspect of this country in the United States is very confident, even though they don't have the skills, they don't have the degree, they, I, and it's just a it's a mindset. So, I, do you think women are different though, and women are not as confident as boys? So, what has um, and it's so interesting because it's the male energy versus the female energy, and I find that. You, like you said, you must go within, do the dream, and feel it, and then take the action on it and balance those male female energies. Um, I think that people who are asking themselves right now, well, what do I really love? What do I mm -hmm. want to do? Have I been inspired lately? Do I have something to act on? I have nothing to act on. Oh, well, I'll forget it. Well, tonight you have to go to sleep 
and be as you fall asleep i know you want to close your eyes and just conk out but you know what you need to talk to your dreams and say dreams yeah. i will remember my dreams this three is so times. funny three times out how loud. many how many out loud three times so i do it like this well, okay sometimes i do i will remember my dreams three times out loud and my students laugh um, you know, let's say you have a partner sleeping next to you. You could do it silently, but it's better to say it out loud because you don't want to do it. So you force through and that kind of, you know, doing what you don't want to do kind of thing really helps build the emotional mm -hmm. energy of it and the desire and those rockets of desire, like Abraham Hicks talks about. So you say it, or you can do it like this. I say, I will remember my dreams. I will remember my dreams. Yes. I will remember my dreams. I will remember my dreams. I will remember my dreams. And you, you, you know, you accent each word, like it's a song, like it's a rap, whatever you think about. And you could say dreams, please help me, you know, what should I do in my job tomorrow? Or what's my purpose in life? Exactly. It, small, keep it simple. Cause I'll ask five different questions and expect yeah. all five answers. But, but I would say, keep it simple because <laughs> I, I got to comment on something. We're going to skip the break. I love what you just said here. Rule thing number one for everybody to be aware of what Kelly just said. If you're getting in bed at night and, and you do this exercise, you got a partner with you and you get some lip from your partner, find another partner. That's just, I'm just saying, that's like a little tip right there for you. Uh, because what, what does that mean? They don't know you right? They're not going to support you. They're probably going to fuel the doubt that you don't have at the moment. I'm just saying to take a look at that. I'm not telling you to change them. I'm just saying, okay, just take a look. The other thing that I love about this is when we're talking about this, you're right. You've got to have the energy in it. See, asking you, asking you shall receive. You got to ask. It doesn't say, oh, wait, only ask for like the car. No, ask. You mentioned Esther and Jerry Hicks. I have got a CD over here. It's the lost CD. Mm -hmm. This is an interview I did with them in 2000. I don't even know what year. It disappeared. It was lost. It was an interview while they were part of the secret and then they weren't. Mm -hmm. I listened to that thing the other day. I don't know why it showed up in my garage. I swear. I have no idea where that came from. But I was meant to listen to it. What's the other thing? I have books. You can't see them in here. I got books in here. I read books. This book, <laughs> this red book, it was just laying on the shelf next to, I got a, um, a, a gemstone. Here's the thing. Let's talk about how do you look for the signs? Because even if I ask, they're going to show up, Kelly. Let's take people to the next thing. Mm -hmm. See, if you ask and you're not aware, Okay, or so if you ask and you get an answer and you think that's not the answer. Come on, let's help people with this part. Here's here's the thing. All right, so you have to be a reader because you read dreams, you read signs and you read and you give them critical analysis and you you attach meaning to them because that is the creativity. Dreaming is arting. If arting was a verb, it would be arting. You are so and there's a living dream. So you're asking at night before you go to bed or even during the day, you have a dream and then something turns up and you just know, you see the energy, you see the resonance, you see the synchronicity from Carl Jung, that, that yeah. word of alignment with that which you were thinking about. And it is an affirmation and you, it is up to you to affirm it and discern its value and that and, and act on it and act on it in coordination with, you know, mm -hmm. your own discernment and sensibilities of, you know, whatever you just saw. So I have to give you an example. Go ahead. Go um, ahead now. Come um, on. So the example could be like before I knew, like I had a dream that I should, um, you know, oh, well, I had a huge dream about asking whales to help me with my career. Wales. I was yes. in Italy. An Italian spirit guide came, said, ask the whales to help you with your career. And there was the big humpback whale mm -hmm. there. And I, and he showed me the, the, the beach, 
go at low tide. That's the best time. And I have said, are you kidding me? This is crazy. But I did it. I got up at five o'clock in the morning. I went to low tide at 7 a.m. I talked to the whales out in the Atlantic Ocean. And from there, my whole life was transformed within weeks. And, um, and I got a new job. And there were so many synchronicities because I started reading the signs and all of the dreams. And I can't, you know, I could go into them one after the other, but here's where the whale showed up again. I didn't know if I was going to, so how many, three months later, I am in this job now and I'm in a coworker's um, office unpacking camera equipment. And there's a toy whale hanging from their their office. They're not even, they're on a sabbatical and I'm in there and there's the whale. And I thought, well, the connection came full circle. Now I went through many, many circles of, you know, experiences to get the job. And the whale is the deliverer of a psychic message and communication across the oceans to its family members. And I feel that that person will be a family member to me in some way, you know, in this new job. Um, so my point is I could have looked at that whale and I didn't see the whale until I was ready to see the whale in that office. Here's my point. I was aware of it and I took action. Like we're talking about, I hope that this illustration kind of put the dots together about asking, doing, reading signs and saying, and, and, and feeling affirmed or taking action in some way. Um, and what I want you to do is look, this is a journey that you may need help with. I needed help with it. I hired people to help me. How do people work with you to get there? Because we have a few minutes left here. And I yeah. want to make sure that what you're talking about is you can be real. You can realize it, but you can't always do it yourself, Kelly. So here's you know, after 35 years of teaching and being a master teacher, I'm so um, adept at giving advice and helping people with action plans. So I do readings from my website and I help people, let's say they don't even have a dream. I can help them get a dream, have a dream for them, interpret something about their life and help, help them reach their goals creatively to transform their lives and I'm especially good with career transitions and creativity pushed put towards career advancement and change. Now, of course, it can apply to family members and relationships and love relationships and money and all of that. Um, and yet I feel that you working with your guys and your dreams is absolutely available now and the experience that I had was so profound and so quick and it's faster than you think, but it's because the energy is on the universe. Let's 10 years ago, this did not happen this fast. 10 years before that, it definitely didn't happen this fast. Things are happening at an accelerated rate. I believe that I've experienced that I've intuited it. I've, and I said, Oh my God, the time is now to manifest because it's only getting the more that you procrastinate, the more that you're going to spiral quickly and spiral down into what you don't want to what you don't want to be dreaming. Yeah. Because of that yeah. Too. yeah. And I want to tell you, I want to get back to my comment. These people that have been negatively categorized under quiet quitting, they are in this process. People have taken a step back. They've had time to really tap into something they didn't have time before. They're not quitting their lives. That is none of what they're doing. And they are the people right now that need the help the most because it is not something that's negative and a, a, deform, a, a deformative of some point. It's not. It's a higher level of consciousness that they're tapping into, a level of self-esteem, a level of self-awareness that's saying, wait a minute, I need to look a little differently about my life today and my future. Wait a minute. You know, what am I doing here that's not in balance with who I am? It doesn't create harmony. See, and what you're talking about when you get dreams, doesn't matter how big or how small, it is a lonely, from my perspective, and hard journey to take alone. When that happened to me, man, I reached out to a practitioner. I hired myself. I had to because I didn't know what to do with it. Isn't that, the, isn't that one of the punchlines for what we're saying today? 
No, I just want to tell everybody, just because I had this dream and the whales helped me and everything fell into place. Are you kidding me? I hired coaches and I spent over a thousand dollars just preparing for my interview. Are you kidding me? I hire everyone I can to support my Absolutely. dream. <laughs> I, I'm constantly tutoring. I'm constantly hiring professionals to, you know, give me classes. I never stop um, hiring coaches that help support my vision to go yeah. forward. I can't do it by myself. But what I do do for other people is help them interpret their soul's message and to understand that as soon as you just intend, the energy now is so quick that you will receive it. And in a dream, you can have a transform, you can transform in a night without anyone's help, but your own. And then you go off on the journey and you, you gather the allies and the coaches and the mentors and the gatekeepers that are going to open the gate for you. And then that's when you go on your hero's journey to, and it might be an outward journey or it might be an inward journey. Um, it depends on where yeah. you're at. I love this because here's where we are in wrapping this up. Mm -hmm. You and I did not get here by ourselves. Let's be very clear. Any kind of message we've gotten, I don't know when that kicked in for me. I can't really give you the date, but I'll tell you there was a point where I said, I not only am I not meant to do it alone, I cannot do it alone and I don't want to do it alone. And the minute that happened, I'm telling you the weirdest situation showed up in Whole Foods. I was, somebody yelled my name, Basili, out in the Whole Foods and it was Scott and he was firing Bobby and she said, do you have a job for me? 2005. Now, if I didn't pay attention to that and boy, everything kicked in because I'll tell you where I went. Oh my God, I don't have money to pay you. Da, 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 da. Look. You, we need help. How do people get a hold of you for help? How do they work with you? How can they listen to your messages? All of that. So I have everything on the dreamdiva.com website. You can email me at the at info at the dreamdiva.com and visit my shop and book a reading. And I would love to work with you or email me your dream and request it to be interpreted on air. And I'd be happy to um, read you, interpret your dream for free on air. And that will be great for other, other listeners. And I think that um, in the future, I will be holding dream events and dream courses. And again, putting it towards helping people manifest their ability to dream and help to release the past. Obviously it is time to move forward like never before. Yeah. And I the dreams are a way to safely help you do that. Don't we have not needed this more than we need it right now? I know that for the time I've been on the planet, I will tell you that mm -hmm. we are in such a unique place right now. People are opening up at the top all over and they don't know what to do next. Mm. Thank you for providing that next for them, Kelly. Thank You're you. Welcome. Wow. Thanks. Real quick, last question, personal message. What do you want to leave us with? I want to leave everyone with the belief that if, you dream it, then it, it already is. And if even if it's a 20 or 30 year old dream, I'd like you to go back to it and revisit it because it will spark something that needs to come into your life to change you, to heal you, to grow you, to give you that love energy, that, um, that, that which you deserve. And I'd like you to have a dream on me tonight. And also in my podcast, I'm going to be dreaming for my audience weekly and actually giving, um, asking my dreams to dream for the audience so that everyone can benefit from that dream. So that's going to be a really interesting um, experiment that I'm going to be doing. So it will be a universal it. kind of thing that will apply to everyone listening, tuning in that day. Yeah, you know why? Because sometimes we cannot do for ourselves what we can do for others. Sometimes we have to, Gloria Steinem said this to me once. She said, Pat, sometimes you have to stand on the shoulders that have come before and see that's what you're doing. You're allowing people to stand on your shoulders. Kelly, thank you so much for that. Awesome. Thank you, Kelly Keo, everybody. I'm Dr. Pat Jacob. Nice job. All of you out there, we're going to tell you lots more about what Kelly's doing what we're doing to support her because the time is now. Faith without works, telling you, don't work. We'll see you next time.